Greetings, it is Max so Diddly here, and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to you get an A in your coursework or exam. Before we begin, remember to import these libraries that I have shown. Most of them are for file handling or to handle audio, and we've also got JOption Pane and a couple of login ones if you're into that stuff. So let's get right into it. Right, the first thing you need to do is just create a try catch statement, try a chunk of code. If something goes wrong, execute what's in the catch, which just prints out the error that is exception E, so we know what's going on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do audio format, and we're going to call it audio format because that's an original name, equals new audio format, and then we're going to pass in some parameters. Audio format dot encoding dot PCM signed, 44,100. A 16, then a 2, then a 4, then another 44,100, and then we're going to pass in a false. So, what is an audio format? Well, it's a class that specifies a particular arrangement of data in a sound stream. With this information stored in this audio format, we can figure out how to interpret the bits in the binary sound data. With regards to the parameters of the constructor for the audio format object, we have the encoding type, which we're going to be doing PCM signed. We've got the sample rate, and then we've got the sample size in bits. Then we've got the amount of channels, then the frame size, then the frame rate, which is usually the same as the sample rate. And then we've got, are we going to use big endian? For the byte storage and if you're curious what big edian is uh, we have little edian is where the least significant bytes are stored before the more significant bytes and big edian is the opposite where the most significant bytes are stored before the less significant bytes i'm not going to go too much into this this is uh, quite advanced audio stuff which i'm not qualified to talk about and I'm not so super experienced with yet. However, use these values and your code's going to work. Uh, you might also be familiar with things like the sample rate, if you are into video recording. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a data line. So what we're doing, we're doing data line.info because we want to create an object that basically handles the info regarding the data line. And so we're going to call it data info equals new data line dot info target data line dot class and audio format. So here we're just going to reference the class target data line and we're also going to pass in our audio format because the data line needs the audio format to get the information that we stored in the audio format. A data line just adds media related functionality. And we can use this either for audio output by using a source data line or a clip, which we've actually covered clips in how to play audio in Java, but it can also allow an application to write audio data. And audio input is handled by the target data line. And the target data line needs to get info from the data line, and that needs to get info from the audio format. So that's why we're having this. And then what we want to double check, we need to check if the audio system is support, supports the data line that we've just created. So what we do is we do if not audio system dot is line supported data info. And that basically means if the data info object, which is our data line object, doesn't isn't compatible or isn't supported, we just print not supported instead of relying on the try catch to throw some error. Now we do target data line target line equals audio system dot get line data info but before that we're going to put in brackets target data line. This is called casting when you put a object type or variable type in brackets before something that means we're going to convert or cast that to what's ever in those brackets. Uh, something you might have done is maybe have a float or double and then put int in front of it to cast that to an integer. 
After that, we also then do target line dot open. A target data line is a type of data line that can read audio. And the most common way for a target data line to get audio is from a capture device, like a microphone or a webcam. And we do target line dot open. That's the equivalent of me basically getting my microphone out ready to record. I haven't hit the record button, but the microphone is there ready for when I do record. Next, we want to do J option pane dot show message dialog null and then text inside and we've put hit OK to start recording. And then we do target line dot start. So why are we using a J option pane? Well, in this example, we kind of want to show that you can record audio for any time specified. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to hit OK, then you're going to start recording your audio. And then after you're going to hit an another OK to stop recording, just to show that you can record for any amount of time you want and how to kind of use buttons to interact with the recording. Target line dot start is basically the equivalent of me hitting the record button. The target line is now going to be reading audio data from whatever audio device is connected. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a thread. And we're going to do thread audio recorder thread equals new thread. And we want to do this because we don't want the audio recording process to stop the rest of the program functioning. We want to still be able to interact with the program while audio is recording, which is why I put it on another thread so that the computer can handle the J option panes while also recording audio at the same time. And this makes even more sense when we like make a GUI uh, sound recorder, which is actually what we're going to be doing further down the line. So we're going to be using a thread better practice to do this, and it's easier in the long run. And we want to override the run function for the thread, or run methods because we're in Java. So we do at override, because we want to basically do some audio input stream stuff when we run the thread, instead of having to manually call the function. And then inside that we want to do audio input stream, we're going to call it recording stream equals new audio input stream, and we're going to pass in the target line. Target line is what's responsible for getting input from the microphone. And an audio input stream is the exact same thing as basically a file input stream in simple terms. It's just a stream of data, of audio data, and that's going into the microphone. And the target line is basically receiving that. And we also need to create a file object, and it's going to be called output file. This is where we're going to actually save our audio recording to. And we're going to call it new file recording.wav or record.wav in this case. This will basically put the audio file in the project folder. And then we're going to have another try catch inside because, yeah. And in the try, we're going to do audio system.write. And this is basically us writing recording to the file. And we're going to pass in recording stream, which is our stream of data. And then we're going to pass in a file format. So while we specify .wav here, we also make, need to make sure the audio format type matches the extension we're putting in the file name. So we're going to be doing wavs. And then we're also going to pass in output file. An output file is just the file object here with the file path to where we want to write the audio. In the catch, we do system.out.println ex. And here we have io exception ex because this is a uh, reading and writing, so an IO exception would give us more detail on the error if something went wrong. And we've got a little message here just saying stopped recording. Because when the thread stops, that's the last bit of line of code that's going to be executed in this thread. So, after defining our thread, we're actually going to reference the thread and click dot .start. No, not click, type dot .start. So that basically starts the thread. And when a thread starts, it executes its run function, which we've overrided so we can customize it. So we do audio recorder thread dot start, which is referencing the thread name here. And then what we do is we do J option pane dot show message dialog, hit OK to stop recording and make sure you put in the null parameter. So what happens here is this thread, well, after we have target line dot stop and target line dot close. And what essentially happens is, once we close those, the audio input stream that we created is no longer going to run because there's no point. 
the thing receiving the audio input stream is no longer open. And that's going to then close the thread because the thread's not actually going to be able to do anything. And then it, so stop recording is printed. And that stops the audio recording, but that, but these are only executed after we hit the OK button on the J option pane. So we've essentially got a record for how long you'd like little program going on here. And that's basically it. So what we're basically going to do here is we're going to open up our project. So if you don't know where your project is, right click on the project and click properties. And you'll find the file path right there. And so we're in our little folder for the Java project. This is where the web file is going to be saved by default based on how we defined it. You could add a folder and then save it to the folder, but I'm lazy. Uh, NetBeans, uh, no. Eclipse users, IntelliJ users, and users of any other IDE, something similar will apply, but not the exact same for figuring out where your project is if you don't know where it is. So we're, we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit play. And we've got the JLP champagne. Hit OK to start recording. Hello, it is Maxo Diddly here, and today I am here with how to record audio with Java. GameStop to the moon. <laughs> and we hit OK to stop recording. We got to stop recording. And after a little second, it says build successful. It does take a moment to write to a file. And we've got a web file here, so let's listen to it. Hello, it is Maxo Diddly here, and today I am here with how to record audio with Java. GameStop to the moon. <laughs> As you can see, it recorded what I said. Anyway, thanks for being a great audience. This was a slightly longer tutorial for a slightly more complicated topic than usual, but I hope I did an alright job. And if you want to know more about the low level stuff behind this, I strongly advise you read for Java docs or go and read somewhere else online. I've just shown you how to do this, and we are going to be going into how to like add a pause and resume button, so if you want to pause your recording and resume it, we are going to do that soon. Also how to make like a GUI recorder, as opposed to a J-Option pane style one. So anyway, have a great day, thanks for watching.